Hi guys, uh, Namaskar. I'm sorry, uh, full uh, internet jhol, tech jhol. Uh, hi Ashok, uh, hi Gerard, Rajasri, um, all of you. Um, I sometimes I feel I think probably climbing Everest is easier than these tech issues that uh, one is uh, dealing with. But um, quickly, thanks all of you for being here. Uh, this is part two of the session with uh, Krishna Bartle. Uh, yesterday, we had reached camp three when an avalanche happened. She was about to say that the avalanche has happened. And then actually, there was a storm in Srinagar where uh, Krishna's cafe is and light, shy, there's that. And cut to today. So I think we'll not waste much time and I will get Krishna on board straight away before another tech jhol happens. Uh, Hey Krishna. Hey. You're back. You're yes, in one we're piece. Back Fantastic. In one piece, yes. Aaj weather report kya rahe Srinagar ka? Aaj weather report actually uh, kaafi acha lag raha hai. Brilliant. The sky, the sky is clear as of now, but uh, you know valley weather it can oh. change any time. Okay. Fantastic. So, um uh, I just wanted a good quick recap from yesterday's conversation ki hum log base camp mein hain. Hum yes. log matlab ki aap hain. And uh, actually, we are we, we, you are taking also this We've journey. Hum, we are all yeah. there. And now, yeah. ek -ek karke, aap log, you are going to higher camps. Yes. So tell us about that avalanche which you just started talking about. Talking about. So yeah, uh, like I was saying, 17th May, we were all, uh, I mean, our entire team had finished all their rotations, all the acclimatization uh, movement of rations, tents, oxygen cylinders had all been done. Uh, me and a few other climbers had actually, oh, Gerard is here. Uh, we were actually, uh, you know, um, trekking on another side. Krishna, you can mountain. put the microphone a little closer to your, uh, yes. yeah, this is better. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we, you know, there's a mountain called Pumoriri, which means yes, uh, yes. younger daughter. Pumoriri is a beautiful we were, mountain. Huh? We were, uh, you know, the two lakes that are there. There's one green lake and one uh, correct, kind of dark correct, brown correct, uh, lake. Correct. We were near that when the avalanche happened. And uh, I mean, of course, we rushed back to uh, base camp and, uh, you know, when you're hoping out of all hopes that there's nothing that has happened to anyone. Mm -hmm. And the only three victims were from our team. Oh, uh, so, so actually, the Eco Everest expedition was, uh, again, divided into two halves. There was, mm -hmm. of course, the international team. Hmm. And then there was a team that had come from Austria. Hmm. This team was a team of doctors that were doing a research on high altitude medicine. Mm -hmm. And there was one climber and his girlfriend. Okay. And they are Sherpa. So they are Sherpa. Uh, you know, when the avalanche happened, they were at, I think, a reaction time of about seven to ten seconds. Okay. And uh, he managed to get them to hide behind a big block of uh, ice. Okay. But he was uh, a little out of the, you know, the covering okay. sort of okay. part. Okay. And uh, when the avalanche hit, mm -hmm. there they were sitting. So if they were, you know, if it's like this Correct. and they were sitting here, okay. this crack opened up. Oh my God. And if, if he was sitting like on the edge over here and his head was out, he huh. got pushed out and these two went inside the crevasse. the crevasse. Oh my God. God. Now they, the the girlfriend and the boyfriend were both stuck like with their backpacks. Mm, I mm. think the the guy was uh, horizontal. Horizontally, and the into girl the crack. was kind yeah. of a little bit on him, but Correct. like a, a slant. Slanting. Yeah, yeah. You know we have crampons on. Oh my right? god! So I know where this she, is going. Yeah, when she struggled to come out of it and all of that. Her crampons injured him almost from the chest to, you know, till his legs. For a lot of audience who are, are probably unfamiliar with the word crampon, these are basically kind of ice shoes with with spikes for grip on ice. So that's like what she's talking about. They're called crampons. Inch, they have one inch, um, yeah, like really pointy. Uh, and so it took... So obviously, I mean, teams rushed from base camp to go, uh, you know, they were not very, very far away. They were only half an hour away from uh, base camp. I mean, walking distance. And um, 
initially obviously we didn't know that the sherpa was missing we just thought that he would be around by evening by the time uh, these two were rescued and they both mm-hmm. summited eventually so they i mean that guy was really strong mm-hmm. uh you know he used to have really long golden hair he used to brush them every morning mm-hmm. anyway but um so yeah i mean initially we were just like okay we just have to find the sherpa we didn't think he would actually you know be completely gone or missing uh by but, evening, but krishna like a movie first describe what is an avalanche what, what what are you experiencing what's happening so an avalanche is basically i mean tons and tons i mean the roar of an avalanche before the avalanche even hits you i think the sound and the wind is so uh, fast ahead of an avalanche uh, actually m- most people that come in the run of the avalanche actually die because of asphyxiation a- a- because mm, the mm. wind is what uh, stops you. them yeah. from breathing yeah yeah, yeah. um other than of course the weight of the ice and then mm-hmm. you know other depending things, yeah. on where yeah. you are so so uh, you did you feel it's coming no we were on another mountain so we heard oh. a crack okay. and then we i mean literally you have seconds once you've heard the crack mm-hmm. so and after that it's just a gushing of ice yeah. Yeah. down That's and it. i mean the cloud of snow that follows it and you know it takes i think half an hour for it to settle the entire yeah. base camp gets covered in a layer of snow so now what so, is happening to the state of mind well um very focused uh, you know I, i was given the job to go and find a, a metal detector because uh, we had a missing missing sherpa and he had a lot of equipment on him mm. so uh, you know the there are there are three four ways of finding someone uh, when they are missing okay um and so metal detector is one of the easiest we as a team did not have our own metal detector so uh, we were asking some of the army expeditions we had a swiss army expedition hmm. uh, you have a, you have a cutie dog can yes. i just show uh, yes he who also is, wants to be is, part of this who is Chita biting baby. my hands right now oh. is, uh, you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, her yeah. name is Moon, by the way. Moon. Oh my God. Yeah, she's white Moon. and husky. Yeah. So tell Moon, Moon, not to bite off this uh, the star because my <laughs> yeah, only technology is left. Yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. I know. I'm saving yeah, yeah. the star from her. Yeah, yeah. Ha. Huh. So, um, so yeah, I think the moment the avalanche happened, we just knew that we had a lot of work to do. There was mm-hmm. no time to, um, you know, I mean, it didn't even cross my mind to sit and sulk or or. Mm. be remorseful or mm. be scared there was no time for that the time mm-hmm. was to get on with it on job mm-hmm. yeah do our part of the role mm-hmm. uh, and i think that i think that is something that leadership does like mm-hmm. dawa made sure i think i'm sure he knew or even apa sherpa for that matter knew how serious it was but he mm-hmm. didn't they didn't let me hit or i i didn't feel the entire intensity of it i was True. told to do my job and, and i went and did yeah. that Yeah, of course it. we were we were a little shaken in fact will cross who had who had already summited the mountain mm. once or twice by then i'm mm. a little confused but he left the expedition okay you know uh, cuz he was like i i have kids back home mm-hmm. and you know he was yeah. a little shaken and of he was course. like i've already done this he what am i doing this for yeah climber mm. and so he left mm. but again even him leaving did not give me the thing ki oh even i can leave or mm-hmm. should i leave mm-hmm. i mean not for a second did i feel in fact i stopped talking to my mother that's amazing cuz she uh, kept calling after the avalanche mm-hmm. and i just refused to take her call because i was like zone you were in a zone she might no mm-hmm. i i was scared that she might tell me to leave the expedition mm-hmm. and i wouldn't be able to say no to her or reason with her mm-hmm. at that point so i didn't want to have that conversation mm-hmm. and my mother was actually calling to tell me that don't worry don't leave the expedition because amazing of, you know? amazing so amazing uh, mom I, ma tujhe yeah. salam amazing yeah, my mother is another level yeah so um so yeah i mean um and what the what the deaths what the deaths in the in the avalanche in your in your yes. team so our sherpa i mean by evening i mean after 4 hours of the expedition once we didn't find him it I mean, very few people would survive more than five, six hours mm-hmm. 
after an avalanche in mm-hmm. snow mm-hmm. uh by 7:30 and the avalanche happened at 1 1:30 in the afternoon i think around 7 7:30 we found a shoe of oh, his god and you know you know mile shoes right you know yes, how yes, high yes. they are yeah, and how yeah, tight yeah. they Heavy. are and yeah, how many yeah. layers mm. of course sherpas are a little uh, you know Mm, experts, so they kind of sometimes keep mm. their laces a little loose, mm. or mm, you know stuff like that. But we found a shoe of his, and Correct. once we found one shoe of his, it was kind of I mean nobody said it, and nobody uh, really you know said key because uh, search parties went out for the next three days mm-hmm. trying to look for him. Mm-hmm. uh the other thing again uh, dava steven did the moment this happened was that the second day he he sent the entire team down to dingboche uh-huh. uh because we had uh, reached the point where we've done all our work high mm-hmm. so we now need to sleep low mm-hmm. correct and uh, you know the fir- the last 10 days from the 17th to the uh, uh oh, sorry i think the avalanche happened on mm-hmm. the 11th and on the 12th we went down to dingboche okay Okay. So, so those last seven days were now like by the twentieth we had to start heading for the summit. Mm-hmm. So we really needed those seven days to have you know to breathe in some oxygen to you know eat healthy food to Correct. get our energies up uh, mm-hmm. because this one month of rotations on the mountain means you lose a lot of muscle fat and mm-hmm. you re- you actually lose a lot of muscle. Uh, that doesn't apply to me. Like my team at the maximum, I think Nick. Lost about fourteen kgs, and mm-hmm. I lost four. Yeah, and yeah. put Youth. back three yeah. on. But <laughs> so, Krishna, I must I must ask you here: Did uh, how did you deal with the death, and especially of a Sherpa who was with you? So, uh, one dialogue that just put everything in perspective still does mm. was that um, um, I think again, Mons Jensen said this to me: the Denmark, the Danish climber. Mm. He said to me uh, that uh, Krishna, you do realize that this could be you. Mm. So I was like, yeah, of course I realize that it could be me. Mm. And uh, then I said, uh, then he said, would you be okay with yourself dying? And I said, uh, yeah, of course I'm a mountaineer. Wow. And he said, if you are okay with your own death, mm. you have to be okay with somebody else's death. Wow. There is. there is no way that you can put this on yourself and be mm. like oh my god mm. you know how am Incredible. i going to do this that's what happened this is like life study at yes. that height and so i think in in a moment i think and i i think that one dialogue helped me deal with uh, i lost you know i mean one of my favorite instructor senor busar uh, passed away uh, i think in 2013 mm. and uh i think i could deal with his death because i knew this in Philosophy. the background yeah yeah so now what what's happening next now uh well so we do our um rest mm-hmm. uh at uh, dingboche mm-hmm. uh by the 19th uh, we actually come back to base camp correct and uh, the weather window you know we wanted to catch the first half of the yeah. weather window yeah. and so our first party was decided i was actually chosen in the first party wow uh so we had uh, nick from uh, america uh yuri mm. who was the russian uh, american correct uh henry yeah. the german mm-hmm. and me okay and apa sherpa okay. we were the five people that went first mm-hmm. in the first team yeah of course uh the other really horrible thing that happened was that um henry who is my climbing buddy mm-hmm. so uh, when we go on the 19th when we left for the higher camps we go directly to camp 2 camp 1 is like a transitional camp yeah, yeah. only to acclimatize correct so once we are acclimatized we actually uh, went directly from base camp to camp 2 uh, for the audience can you please tell what height is camp 2 So base camp is five thousand three hundred and thirty-three meters. Camp okay. two is six thousand four hundred meters. Okay. Um, uh, and so yeah, about eleven hundred meters of a uh, climb. Any any uh, mathematicians in the group quickly do a conversion and put the feet in this uh, chat so that people can know because Indians usually talk in feet. It's okay. 
you you don't convert krishna your mathematics is like incredible <laughs> let's go again yeah i i could convert to another uh, citizenship faster than <laughs> i could do the math yeah 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 so um so now what is so, happening here yeah. um so yeah okay now 20th morning mm-hmm. uh henry has a concussion and uh, i mean at i think 7:30 in the morning i hear screams outside i go rushing out uh the sherpas have found henry face down flat outside his tent oh my god till the end we never figured out whether he had the concussion first or whether he fell down first okay he was then rescued we actually the sherpas and uh, me and we all walked down till the khumbu ice fall where the second team from base camp came to pick him up he and he was like i said 6 Huge. foot 4 yeah, inches yeah, yeah. uh so guys walk- guys this is rarefied air we are talking about so even every step is multiplied by so many times and we are talking about picking a man these sherpas are incredible uh and uh, how much time would it take from camp 2 to base camp um it would i think it took them about 2 to 3 hours to bring him yeah. back down yeah and he was mm. flown out of base camp immediately at the same time mm. andy our other uh, no actually his name was not andy his name was jesse okay jesse who was the other american young fellow that was also a climber mm. he had been taking dexamethanol you know dex you know the i know i know limits, yeah 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 that yellow injection yeah, that yeah, they show yeah, yeah he had been taking dex tablets oh. 2 mg every day since he left lukla oh. okay which is completely wrong it was it's not supposed to be done and he was shitting blood by hmm. the end of it Two, yeah um, i i got some conversions right out here um, um i i think it's roughly Uh, you see, Everest base camp is around eighteen thousand feet, so um, uh, we're getting one zeros less, guys. Uh, Uday, it cannot be three thousand six hundred feet. It has to be uh, something like eighteen or nineteen or twenty, twenty-one thousand feet, uh, because we're in camp two and uh, Everest is twenty-nine. So I think the conversions are not right here. <laughs> Undo this cold. The dog or me? The dog. The okay. dog. She's uh, okay. sorry. Yeah. So, There's no, uh, nobody to take care of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. fine, cool. Yeah. Anyway, so um, so yeah, uh, uh, he he was bleeding. You know, he, basically his intestines had completely become become a sieve by now mm. because he had been taking Dex mm. for like one and a half months almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, so both Henry and he were flown out from base camp that same morning mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Jesse spent. the next two months in nepal in an icu oh my god went back and sued the american doctor that had that had prescribed him this that won yellow a million mm. yeah one million dollars and now lives in a castle mm. so just side story <laughs> amazing amazing yeah and henry of course uh, you know uh, uh, recovered in a few uh, weeks we mm. uh, he had actually just done a uh, wisdom tooth mm. uh, thing Okay. Before coming for the expedition, and I think that was what his uh, problem was. Okay, main story back. So yeah, so uh, this whole thing happened. Okay, now my climbing buddy has left me and okay. gone. Mm-hmm. Who was like the strongest person in the team? Like, I think I I used to be like, yeah, me me with me. So Henry, hey, you know. So mm-hmm. that had completely mm-hmm. gone. Now it mm-hmm. was me, Nick, and Yuri going up to uh, the higher camps. Okay. We went to camp four mm-hmm. uh, on the twentieth. Yeah. And, camp 4 uh, is what height camp 4 is 8000 uh, 8000 meters yeah uh, so camp 4 is 8000 meters guys okay yes. yeah yeah so uh, we reached camp 4 now uh, my instructors my nehru institute mountaineering instructors were also at base camp all through this not all of them not all of them did they come to cheer you or they, they had some no, their no, own no, office they, work hey they had their and i of course of course of course so uh, Why did the Kida of Everest go into me? Because hmm. I did the pre-Everest expedition with Nehru Institute of Mountaineering hmm. on Satopan, hmm. becoming the youngest hmm. person in the world to have climbed Satopan. Correct. Therefore, qualifying for Everest and therefore going for Correct. Everest. Correct. Uh, and so you know these instructors that knew me since I was fifteen, I met them all on the uh, you know 
on they were all there at camp four. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was amazing to have. I mean, okay. uh, you know, this. I don't know if you remember. I, there was this instructor of mine. I used to call Hercules mm-hmm. okay. because he was literally, you know, he, even if there was like five feet of snow, mm. he would just ra- rip a rope out of it, like okay. just like that. So uh, he was there, and you know, we we cheered about the fact that we we're living at eight thousand meters and blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah. Uh, we left that night. We started climbing on the twentieth night itself. Correct. At uh, about eight thirty in the night. Correct. Uh, there were not many teams ahead of us. Uh, there mm-hmm. were about maybe four or five teams, which means mm-hmm. about five into five, about twenty five thirty people ahead of us. Okay. Um, and we began. We began the climb. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was. It, so- it's what? It's what? It's it, it's night. Yes, it's night. Tell me, tell me what's, what what is it? It's, it's a All clear right. sky. Tell me, describe. So, it's cinema. So, it's movie. <laughs> it's eight thirty in the night. Okay. Uh, the stars Guys, can you out. believe it? Did you ever know that actually you start climbing for Everest in the night? I'm sure people who are not into climbing will never even fathom that how can you climb in the night? But that's the best time because the ice is firm. But I have a beautiful visual I had seen somewhere. I think it was taken in National Geographic that from another mountain they had taken. Was yes. just the lights, the headlights, just like dots on the slope of Everest. It was one of the most magical shots I'd seen. Over to you, Krishna. Yeah. I'll tell you a little joke uh, mm. in this. Uh, me and Arjun were climbing Makalu mm. in 2015. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you all had sponsored that expedition. Yeah. And we were, uh, you know, about 400 meters from the summit, about 500 meters from the summit, mm. and uh, Everest and Makalu are right opposite each other. Correct. Mere wali mm. khidki mein. Correct. So, uh, you know. Uh, I could see uh, Tibet side se sare lights uh, going wow. up to the summit and from Nepal side, from Makalu. Wow. And I and we were tired, we were exhausted, we were having the toughest climb of our life. Hmm. And Arjun was sitting next to me, we were giving ropes to the Sherpas hmm. and you know, Arjun was kind of dozing off. And I was hmm. like, Arjun, Arjun, wo dek lights. Hmm. And then I was like, dude, do you think they can see our lights? Do you think we should flicker? He's like, dude, they're climbing Everest. Nobody cares about you right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, just before you go ahead so, for the audience, um, just a perspective shot that what happens in the mountains, man versus mountain ka relationship kya hai. I'm just putting up a photograph here. Um, yeah, this one, I, I'll hide myself. Yeah. So s- this is just a uh, harmless looking slope. If you go a little closer, just go closer to this photograph, you'll see four dots on that horizon. And that is that is just perspective of people like climbing. That's climbing. like it's crazy. It's just it's they're like dots, but just watch it carefully, and you will watch. You can watch four or five people climbing this. Just to tell you the magnanimity of what we are talking about. It's like absolutely crazy. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, well, we we started climbing on Everest around eight thirty, and uh, you know we're all in a line. We have mm. to constantly keep moving. We also, you know, when we're uh, climbing with other people, you have to also take care of uh, everyone else's pace. You can't go too slow. You mm. can't go too fast. Mm-hmm. Um, it is not uh, like overtaking on highways is not allowed. Overtaking here is Everest also a big deal mm. uh, because you are really killing someone's morale if you overtake them. Like but people keep on might... ac- accusing of uh, a, a bottleneck in Everest. Were there a lot of people that day? Uh, that night, sorry. I think that trend had sort of already begun, but it was uh, in a very, very moderate, nascent stage. Like yeah. Compared okay. to what it is today, it yeah. is at a very, very hmm. early stage, I hmm. would say. So we were still, I mean, uh, I personally felt no difficulties Brilliant. in terms of traffic during this time. Okay. Um, now, throughout the time that I was climbing, there was flashes happening behind me. Okay. okay? And I kept thinking that there was somebody that had the patience and the courage and the bravery mm. to take that camera out and take pictures. And I was like, whose battery is working so much? Correct. Iska At that height. Chal ke hai. What that temperature height? are we talking about, Krishna? This is about minus... 20, 25 degrees Celsius. Guys, um, so minus 25 degrees Celsius. We are probably now around 27, 27 and a half thousand feet. Um, we are, uh, Krishna, are you feeling fatigued? Are you tired? What is happening? 
extremely extremely fatigued because uh, you know um Mm. So, actually, uh, the entire time that this uh, thing is happening, we um, we were completely in a zone. Actually, can you? Yeah, yeah. Wait, just yeah, sure. A second, there's somebody honking like crazy outside my house. That's okay. It's India. Mm. So that that's. That's Krishna Hello? party for you. That's why she climbs Everest. Hello? She, she, she's going to tell somebody not to honk. Hello? Unbelievable. No, no. He's calling me and honking. Okay. So there's somebody way. waiting for me. Hello, hmm. Feroz sahab. I'm main, main actually on the call. My class is going on. Listen to me. You're listening to our gate. Okay, okay. You want to go and, uh, you want to go and tackle that? तो Yeah. Uh, by the time, by the time we reached a balcony, mm. uh, I think it was about. Uh, tell, tell them what balcony is. So, so uh, in the olden times, uh, before in the eighties, before uh, Everest became a commercial expedition, uh, there used to be a camp five on the balcony, uh, which mm. is at about eight thousand five hundred meters, mm -hmm. and. Um, It it was one of I mean staying at that height was considered extremely risky and yeah. and there was a time actually you thought that man could not survive there yeah exactly yeah. and so that was the thing uh, the, but the balcony the, the dead zone yeah. yes the dead zone actually once we've left uh, camp four we're already in the dead zone correct um so at when i turned around at, from 8:30 in the night to about 1 1:30 in the night when i reached balcony is the first time that i turned around okay and the moment i turned around mm -hmm. i realized that the flashing was not a camera or mm -hmm. anything like that it mm -hmm. was lightning that was happening on the horizon horizon oh like my, in beautiful. india उटरेस्ट literally there was like there was like uh, matlab my come back to that was no problem we'll also become like rob hall and yeah. you know so so no uh, so people who are watching this the incident that uh, krishna is talking about is that on this fateful day uh, this was one of the, probably the worst accidents on everest happened where probably 12 people had di died and this became the international outrage as to what's happening on everest they are talk talking about that incident so this is how it started a lightning here a lightning there and then uh, one of the most devastating storms hit everest which yeah. just uh, so yeah go back yeah scott fisher and uh, yeah. rob hall rob and Hubbard. actually yeah. rob hall is uh, rob hall's body was still there at correct. that point i mean uh, climbers would go and yeah. you know pay their respects correct, to correct. him proceed um so well that happened of course uh, again i don't think matlab uh, i think nick was about half an hour 45 minutes ahead of me yuri was uh, an hour and a half ahead of me mm -hmm. um now i was waiting like by this time i was waiting for the hillary step like after every half an hour i would ask or after every 15 minutes i would ask my sherpa so is the hillary step here yet can you uh, see the reached, can you see I, the top of everest from where you are From here? No, no. From wherever you are there, 
now you're in the back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, actually, the moment you come to Camp 3, mm. you can see the summit. Ah, From Camp okay. 3 onwards, you can see the summit. You can see the Hillary Step. You can see okay. the southwest face. Uh, you know, the rocky part of Everest that is always shown in pictures. And just to put in perspective, between Camp 4 and Summit, there is no stoppages anymore. You have to go, climb and come back, right? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Let's go ahead. Um. So, now, now I'm like, my next biggest thing is I have to reach the Hillary step. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of fatigue, tiredness, there's not really, I mean... Uh, we're on oxygen. So we're not on oxygen till camp 3, which is okay. 7,400 meters. Okay. Okay. Above that, when we start using oxygen, it's actually like, uh, you know, we call it juice up in oh. the mountain. It's like, it's like to rocket ki tarah bhaage ga ab, oh. because you get oxygen. Yeah. Because we're used to not having oxygen till 7,400 meters and then we suddenly have a lot of oxygen. So in terms Great. of fatigue, Hmm. I think there was no fatigue. In fact, I felt like I had more energy or more. Correct. Uh, the only thing is the, the mask is super, super annoying. I mean, hmm. you know, like when you put a leash on a puppy in the first six days, it's just hmm. getting used to the belt and all of that. It's just you do. You cannot tolerate it. And it makes a very dry uh, yeah. thing in your neck. Correct. It feels like a, a ball of hair that is stuck mm -hmm. in your throat. So mm -hmm. that is the most uncomfortable feeling. Okay. No, hot water, nothing, nothing takes yeah, that I off. Get you. Yeah, I get you. And that actually stays for a month after you come back from the mountain also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, we're uh, at that point, we reached uh, South Summit. Okay. And South Summit is where that magic happened, which is your favorite moment of my climb. And I think my moment also, my favorite moment of the climb Tell was them. when, uh, so we're now at camp, uh, I mean, we're now at South Summit and uh, the summit is like literally ahead of me. I can see, yeah. you know, I can see the Hillary step. And I can see people actually opening flags at the summit. It's so you're, you're roughly around 29,000 29, feet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think mm -hmm. I would be about 100 uh, feet less and 50 yeah. meters yeah. Okay, lower. Okay. okay, I get you. Yeah. And um, the sun, I mean, of course, you know, the indigo blue sky and the orange light. What time is it now? Early morning? This is around 4.35. Yeah. Okay, 5 in the morning. Exactly 5. I've just, I'm telling you from half an hour before 5 o'clock. Okay. okay. Yeah, from 4.30. Mm -hmm. So the orange light, you, you know, line kind of expands into, you know, slowly taking over the indigo blue mm -hmm. and, you know, ch changing that color. Mm -hmm. The highest clouds are at the height of about 6,000 meters. There mm -hmm. are no clouds. I mean, cirrus clouds are there above 6,000, but those are the light ones. They can't, they are not really that mm. uh, visible. You're above the clouds. So, the hi yeah, the highest clouds are at 6,000. So, they're 2,000 meters lower than me. Mm. And the sun is coming from below those clouds. Oh, my God. So, on my right, hmm. so if I'm facing um, towards the summit, on my right is Tibet. Hmm. And on my left, is Nepal and hmm. India, uske niche India of course. Correct. And um, this this light, you know, starts from below me. So literally on this side, there hmm. is a massive shadow of Everest. And so, guys, I will I will uh, I will not torture uh, Krishna anymore. For you to see one of the most incredible photographs I've seen from that height is what she's talking about. Is this one? Just. Carefully watch this photograph as you hear Krishna talk because it's one of the most incredible things. Krishna, just tell them what are we seeing in this photograph. <laughs> so you fun. are seeing the shadow of Mount Everest. Uh, and this is almost 15 minutes after the first shadow appeared, which was which went above the horizon. You can see that this is just at the horizon. It took me 10 minutes to take my camera out and actually take a picture. Um, and so... I think at this point, I also realized that I am a part of that shadow, that I am actually there on this, you know, this little pinnacle that you can see right at the top. I uh, am a part of that shadow. And 
yeah i think that was the most incredible view i had never heard of this nobody ever told me of all the books i had read about everest and climbs and this and that i had never read anyone describe this moment talk about this moment mm. and um yeah it was in it was just the most incredible awesome. awesome and now now how much how much is left of for you to reach right at the top and well the next uh, i think half an hour i must have uh, no the next two hours the next two hours i reach the summit mm-hmm. at uh, 6 30 i reached the summit and uh, on my way my entire uh, you know satopant pre everest expedition members mm-hmm. walked down mm-hmm. and said you know all these instructors that used to be like hey chal chal krishna chal they were like are yahi pe hai ja ja so you know that whole House. comedy or happened on the uh, correct hillary step yeah yeah and uh, i mean i cross the hillary and i then i asked my sherpa i'm like hillary step he's like hum aage hillary oh step ke upar aage so the hillary step went like that my god like guys hillary step happen? is a technically difficult climb she's making it as if she's just walking in lokanwala but this is everest we're talking about but that's oh, krishna yeah. she always underplays all these things but yeah when I, you can understand her fitness level when she's didn't even realize that she's standing on hillary step which is actually a technical climb yeah go ahead i was just excited with yeah. my instructors and that whole thing yeah, yeah. was going on so i yeah. i didn't i didn't realize we reached the summit um we i i don't believe this myself but i was there for 45 minutes on um, the summit yeah Unheard like the of. difference yeah. the difference between the first photograph i took and the last photograph i took on the summit is about 30 minutes and i i mean I changed my oxygen cylinder. I, you know, did other things before. So, so let let let's pause minutes. at this moment. Let's take it now. Now, on the summit, obviously, we realize that there is no other place to climb. This is the this is the pinnacle. Am I right? What does it feel? You can see the curve of the earth. Actually, what does it feel like? I. Mm, it feels. Uh, that it's it over incredible no not at all not at all i mean go you have to still go back to base camp. that's amazing yeah, that no, is yeah. The that's the toughest part yeah that is the toughest part no not for a moment you feel ki oh ho gaya ab ye 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 feeling nahi aata hai but i was i was excited i went a little bit into tibet and i was like oh i'm in tibet now <laughs> you being a 19 year old actually yeah, yeah. so I so mean, guys this is a very very historic program at 19 Krishna Vidal that time was the youngest climber in India this is the photograph which i want to share she is standing on top of mount everest at the age of 19 a big round of applause to her yeah yeah Yay! awesome awesome <laughs> this is what an amazing uh, amazing moment um, yeah. for her yeah uh, sorry continue now now i'll keep this photograph while you continue for some time yeah okay mm. So as you see the yellow thing is uh, is a box in which there is a murti of a buddha that was placed 2 days before i submitted mm-hmm. and uh, this was placed by two sherpa brothers it stayed there for about 3 4 years and then okay. it uh, disappeared mm-hmm. um i uh, i was actually um quite um quite at peace when i was there i was very like uh, there was a there was a, a british woman whose camera was not working mm-hmm. and so you know i took her pictures mm-hmm. appa sherpa came mm-hmm. uh, you know half an hour uh, or 15 minutes after me mm-hmm. uh, and of course that you know created a fervor among the climbers there was a mm-hmm. discovery team that reached around the same time so they were shooting you know there was a lot of stuff going on so so listening to Krish, krishna lag raha hai ki wo durga puja mein ashtami ke din hum log sab anjali karne khade hote hain na samne sab milte hain hello hi hi so this is happening on top of mount everest incredible yeah totally yeah, yeah. oh and then we forgot we forgot to tell the base camp that we reached the summit hmm. so just before we were leaving we uh, apa sherpa was like did you inform the base camp that you've reached the summit and i was like oh we forgot to do that we we're like who base camp yeah. uh, so, here i will here i will just take over quickly um yes. uh, because uh, I a quick flashback now that and this is the state of sports in our country that once krishna climbed everest and of course she's talked about euphoria but what she didn't mention 
was a part of her was constantly thinking how will a father give back the money that he has taken as a loan from the bank and uh, she also knew that uh, where does a mountaineering stand a chance for a corporate to give in money so in fact she's so desperate that she is looking for product you you say you say it so yeah i mean uh, this was there at the back of my head throughout the climb i mm. had i mean you know i had written to from sharukh khan to sanjay dat to amitabh bachchan to mm. everyone i had written hand written notes i had met mm. amir khan and told him i would mm. sell you my script and mm. blah 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 mm-hmm. and uh, obviously none of that had worked so my final this thing was that i would take uh, pictures with products at the summit of everest and then hopefully come back and sell these pictures yeah. to the uh, products so so here owners. is here is krishna um uh, eating maggi right? hoping that uh, some company will look at this say maggi hopefully and say you know hey great so i'm just trying to say that can you imagine a person achieves such an incredible incredible thing at the age of 19 but back of mind ke paise wapas dene dad ne loan le rakhe i think this is the most incredible part of the story for me which is why it fascinated me about krishna she laughs about it and she's moved on from there but i think this is something to pause and think that in our country we really have to look the way we sponsor sports and look at things ki yaar kon mountain climbing is not a spectator of sport to uske liye koi membership hi nahi hai maine koi sponsorship hi nahi hai anyway we shall not crypt today uh, yeah, we, we shall we, we, today. we should enjoy the moment so everest now you're coming back yes now i'm coming back I actually, you know, I'll tell you uh, when the loan got waived off on the twenty third. Mm-hmm. I submitted on the twenty first of May. On the twenty third of May um, is when mom called me up and told me. Actually, that twenty third is the time that I spoke with my mother for the first time once I reached back to base camp. Mm-hmm. And the moment she told me that the loan has been waived off was God. when I actually celebrated. I think. And hats off to the gentleman. Then, uh, Parasut Bank, who actually waived off this loan, which yes. is like I, incredible that, that somebody can do something like that. I, I, my pranam. That was magic. I mean, I don't think that I. I mean, even when I stood at the summit of Everest, I didn't think that I have done great things, or that I have achieved a lot of things, or anything. Mm-hmm. Also, we had not expected media, newspapers, or anyone to talk about us. To Correct. be very honest. Yeah. Uh, mm. and when i say us i mean me my mother and my aunt who had correct. worked tirelessly for correct. this correct correct um we had never expected mm. any of these reactions ki koi bank 30 lakh ka loan wave off karegi ye to sawal hi nahi uthta absolutely yeah so, but that is that is uh, that is a uh, vision just quickly want to tell you that um, yes. i'm I, i'm glad we could finish the ever story but because we have more time i'm going to say two more stories which is very important first and foremost she was talking ki uh, after after a particular height oxygen tank liya tha there was one man in the world the first man who climbed everest without oxygen he is the god of mountaineering and i started getting interested in mountaineering stories i was telling you yesterday i, I love the stories is because of a man called ranol mesner i was never jealous that krishna climbed everest i had never <laughs> jealous that she's done so many things but i was jealous because of this one photograph where oh. krishna met ranol mesner he's god guys he's it's actually he's the god of mountaineering he's can I, he's can I broken all rules yeah please please <laughs> so we were returning from makalu okay and i so will cross was again there with me and arjun to climb makalu mm-hmm. and will cross had some like a medical emergency mm-hmm. which is why he was going to fly from base camp mm-hmm. okay it was i think 50 years uh, of celebration 2015 mein tha mm-hmm. there was some jubilee celebration uh, happening and renhold mesner was going to come for that conference mm-hmm. now will and me are very close so will told me to be the uh, medical sort of um, kind of assistant, assistant to yeah. him mm-hmm. while he flies because mm-hmm. he will need help with his uh, iv and stuff like that hearing your every story i become thirsty sorry you yeah, go ahead mm. and so all this was decided okay the next morning i am going to fly with will mm. back from makalu and makalu base camp trek is literally something that you wouldn't even wish on your worst enemy it is the 
toughest trek I have ever done. It goes mm-hmm. on and on for days. I think it takes about 20, 22 days on a normal thing. Like on a fast pace, you can do mm-hmm. it in 20 days. And so, um, and the next morning, the morning that we're supposed to fly, my boyfriend comes, my then boyfriend comes to surprise me to base camp. Mm -hmm. And he's obviously going to walk back. And I can't, I mean, considering he has come to surprise me, I can't fly away that morning. Therefore, Arjun takes my seat and flies away. And is going to go for this conference. And uh, the rest of us, the team that walks back, my boyfriend, me, uh, there was Fernando from Colombia and Gia from uh, uh, Georgia. The entire way, we have only given Galias to Arjun. Mm. Like, we have literally abused the hell out of him saying... That guy, how dare he go back on an aircraft? We have to bloody walk Correct. through this shit and yeah. we have leeches on our feet and, you know, we're in the worst thing possible. <laughs> and this is like, I think, five uh, five villages before the roadhead. Uh-huh. We suddenly see a helicopter that's coming, uh, you know, to the village that we're going to stay for the night. Uh-huh. Me and uh, Gia are the first people that are entering the village. Mm-hmm. The helicopter literally comes and lands right next to me about 40 uh, feet 50 Mm. feet from me Mm. and i'm like very irritated i'm very irritated at this helicopter also because i know i can't get on it and go Mm. and the conference is still like two three days away Mm. and i see renhold messner walk out with two gallons empty gallons Mm. of 50 liters each and come to the shop i'm just like is that Renhold Messner? It was like a scene from a movie Stupid. when this guy just walks out. If I'm I'm going to collapse. Oh my, oh my god. god. We, god. Had, we had lunch with him. We oh chilled in the afternoon with oh, him. Yeah. Oh my god. Till his uh, helicopter got refueled and he went Amazing back. Guy. And then Amazing. two days later, Arjun met him. So we all called Arjun in the night. We were like, ha! We met that <laughs> before you! And we got like one on one on him. So yeah. So um, uh, quickly to tell you, tell you guys that apart from climbing Everest, then Krishna Patil decides to climb seven summits. Seven summits ka concept very important hai. South continent made the highest mountains she climbs in one year, making her the youngest climber. And here's a story which I want to tell her. But before that story, quickly let's go through some of these photographs for people to know. Where are we standing? This is uh, where. This is Kilimanjaro. So right Kilimanjaro after is the highest October. mountain in Africa. So she's standing out there. Yes. Um, then um, we shall come to the next one, which is which is, where, where is where is uh, this? This is Elbrus. Elbrus is in Russia. Elbrus Russia. is the highest mountain in Russia, guys. So uh, highest yeah. in Europe. Europe. Sorry. So yeah. Ye Achha, Next, I'm enjoying this. Uh, then this is a beautiful photograph. What? Where is this? This is Antarctica. This is Antarctica. This is so, Antarctica, and the the tiny uh, dashes you see behind every human are they are sledges of fifty kilos, fifty sixty kilos. Ka jo sledge hai piche. Yeah. So so um, Krishna, just quickly tell uh, our our viewers about the incredible story is how the aircraft lands lands oh. in Antarctica. That's an incredible story. Yeah, that's so, Antarctica. Yeah, that that is the illusion uh, two seventy. Hmm. Uh, it's got a bubble window yeah. in the nose. Hmm. Uh, right, this is a Russian aircraft that, as you see, has tires on it and lands on blue ice. So this aircraft does not apply brakes when it's when it lands in Antarctica. It just I won't say skids, but rolls. They just let the plane roll till it comes to a stop on its own. So the um, runway is about four kilometers. I think it takes the the runway is actually eight kilometers, but I think it takes about four to five kilometers for the aircraft to come to a halt on its own. Because if they mm-hmm. apply brakes, then mm-hmm. it will skid. Oh, okay. So, so that's that's uh, that's yeah. that. When I I love that visually of the uh, aircraft is flying and blue ice means hardly any friction and it's going on and on and on. Uh, yeah. Where is where is this? Uh, where is this? 
This is again Elbrus. Elbrus. Okay, great. This is um, you are holding an India flag. Where is this? This is Aconcagua. Aconcagua Ar is the only... Aconcagua is South America's highest peak. Mm -hmm. It is the only peak from where you can see the ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. My God. That's, I mean, that's, not exactly see it, yeah. but like... Yeah, I get you. Yeah. So, um, so uh, these are some of the stuff that uh, is there. Uh, now tell us the story. Um, uh, you would be the youngest girl in India uh, to have done so I seven am, summits. I would have been, but I am not. Huh, I know that. So, so that the story <laughs> is coming is to why you couldn't. Now this is Alaska, Mount Denali. Tell the Mount Denali story. All right. So I have basically done all the six uh, summits um, by uh, like under a year. Mm -hmm. I completed, I did uh, Kilimanjaro in October, I did Antarctica in December, I did Australia in Jan, um, I did Elbrus in March, and no, I did South America in Jan, sorry, mm -hmm. December I did Antarctica, Jan I did South America, March I did Australia, April I did Elbrus. Mm -hmm. And May, I mm -hmm. was supposed to do Denali. So I had mm -hmm. planned the expedition such that I would summit before the 21st of May. Mm -hmm. Therefore, doing the seven summits in under a year. So I would have mm -hmm. been the fastest woman in the world to have done the seven summits. My God. My God. And I would be, I don't think... I would have been the youngest. I would okay. have been the fastest. fastest. I get because, it. Because uh, Samantha yeah. Larson was there. Not that I'm choosing anything out of this. It's great for me either. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I mean, I'm just going. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. So, so tell me what happens on that mountain. So, well, by the time I go to Alaska, I, uh, you know, I mean, international mountaineers know me. People, uh, you know. The you become a name by this time. Yeah. 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 The international mountaineering community is aware that there is an Indian girl that is attempting mm. to climb you know, all the seven summits and mm. all of this is happening. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I used to be welcome to camps. We'd be like, oh, you're the Indian girl, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, I made a lot of friends. In fact, uh, I went to Alaska with a friend that I made on uh, the South American climb, Rob okay. Hall. Okay. No, not Rob Hall. Can't be Rob, Rob Hall here. Mm. Yeah, can't be Rob Hall. Rob, I don't remember. His Forget name it. Now. Yeah. Mm. So uh, Rob and me uh, both, in fact, uh, had to do a lot, you know, had mm. to do Alaska. So we chose this company uh, with him. Oh, my instructor is here also. Uh, What's his name? Deep. Oh, Deep. awesome. Hi, Deep. Yeah. That's Deep Saha. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, uh, and amazing. Then, so, um, so um, yeah, I mean, I reached this uh, expedition. It was, again, five American men, one Indian girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a normal expedition at the beginning. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I was, a, I, I mean, I was the only girl in a men's team. Um we reached camp four mm -hmm. um, and we had a little bit of bad weather in the last two days mm -hmm. that we climbed. Yeah. Um, the day that we're supposed to go for the summit push, mm -hmm. we have two, we have two guides and we're mm -hmm. five climbers in all. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so there is one made like the, the senior guide and the junior guide. Mm -hmm. Right. Now the senior guide, uh, his name was Forrest. Hmm. And he was... Uh, it seemed like he had a problem with me, but I never gave it too much okay. attention because hmm. I was like, okay, if he doesn't hmm. like me, it's okay. He doesn't hmm. have to like me. Hmm. You know? Um, I was okay with that. Hmm. I didn't give it too much attention, nor did I try to like correct hmm. it or hmm. anything. I was hmm. like, okay, nahi hmm. ban raha, to theek hai. Hmm. So now he... Uh, the day of the summit, he wakes up and he says that he is extremely unwell. Hmm. And uh, that um, only the junior guide will go. Mm -hmm. And on one particular rope, you can have only five members. Mm -hmm. 
that is the federal law of mm. climbing mountains in, USA, in the yeah. US mm. and uh, or company policy or something like that i can't even mm. be sure anymore mm. i think mm. um and he said i am not going mm. okay because i am sick mm. so the weakest member of the team will not go oh, and you are the weakest member of this uh, group after climbing everest and doing six summits he felt that yeah you are the weakest member of this group so you will not go he will go with the other four men so you were the only woman i was the only woman and mm. i mean and you were I the only i don't think i don't think you can put me as the weakest member with them i mean you know we used to cut these ice blocks so in mm -hmm. uh, alaska there is so much wind that comes that mm -hmm. when we put up a tent mm -hmm. we have to also build a wall around mm -hmm. the tent and so these things are cut with the um, shovels that we have mm -hmm. and i would i would make 3 4 5 6 of mm -hmm. these bricks and couldn't make more than that and i agree and he actually he actually put that as the as the thing that mm. you know you could only make five bricks the rest I'm of them sure was something 20, else yeah, 20 something bricks else. yeah seems illogical to me yeah we called the company we called there was there was two other teams with us that had a mountain guide and only two clients i said if your male climbers are so strong the male climbers can go with that guide correct a different company is this thing correct. i will stay with our team correct no company guidelines we can't do that mm. i mean they they just didn't want you to climb at at some point i mean i was talking to my mother over the satellite my mom was like just screw him just go push him mm. off the mountain mm. <laughs> and run up mm. cuz i was literally 400 500 meters oh from the God. summit so this 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 story is happening 400 meters short of the summit where you could have been yes. the fastest climber in the world yes oh my yes. god i have called okay and also uh, we didn't uh, talk about this but me and the Man mumbai mantralay had become best friends by mm. now because mm. and not because i climbed everest but mm. because i had spent me and my aunt nisha maushi we spent 3 months just going to the mumbai mantralay we knew every pun there we knew every pa there mm. we knew almost every minister there there was not mm. one minister we hadn't met by then mm. i called up the cm office mm. in bombay and told mm. them that i'm going to make a world record you need to tell these guys to somehow allow me to climb right now mm. we called up everything my mother called up the ceo mm. of this company mm. everything possible was done but no these guys were like no you will not go up i have i think cried for 12 hours straight in a tent till my team came back and they came back cross bitten there was a massive storm that they got stuck in and they came back with frostbite rob actually had you know his fingers It black and blue like, yeah. um and Almost yeah died. and we walked back and um i mean i don't think i have hated more than that ever ever Mm. And uh, um, yeah, so I think it all comes part of uh, yeah. The thing, but I, I think it does I not. I couldn't see. I couldn't see snow for the next year till two thousand eleven. I couldn't see snow. Two thousand twelve, that I didn't see snow after that because I was like, "Meri ko dekhne ka hi nahi hai." Meri ko, mm. I From don't even want to look at snow. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, I know what you. I know what you've been through, and and uh, we're going to wrap up very soon now. Yes. Uh, but uh, before we do that i just want to tell you one thing that another thing which is i have seen you going through is once in a moment of vulnerability you had said that i hate everest and that is coming at a time where actually it seemed that whatever you did would always be about the everest and i think mm -hmm. there was a time where you want to talk about this Uh yeah sure I mean wh why did I come to why did I choose Srinagar one of the reasons I chose Srinagar was also because nobody knew me here mm. I have a lot of friends in Uttarakhand and I have a lot mm. of friends in Himachal Pradesh and I would never move out of that I I I started I was a fat kid mm. I'm still a fat kid mm -hmm. I think uh you know when I climbed Everest it was like you didn't lose weight on Everest to patli kaise nahi hui uh whether it was corporate 
or people you know the, my agency that would get me talks would be like you know if you were thinner i think you would get more talks and i was like you don't look like a mountaineer i'm like i am a mountaineer <laughs> this is what a mountaineer looks like don't tell me i don't look like a mountaineer true you know yeah. i everest didn't climb me i climbed everest wow. so mm-hmm. what i have done is is the reason i could do it you know Correct. don't don't bring it back yeah. to me and don't 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 structure it yeah yeah don't structure it don't tell me don't tell me how mountaineers look this is how mountaineers look learn mm. watch mm-hmm. this is the body mm. that you need to climb a mountain correct and, 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 and actually climbing the mountain is not about the body it's about the mind exactly uh and i think also when like when i came to kashmir um my my uh, my bosses or my friend circle in kashmir didn't know that i had climbed That's everest till 4 months into the job when you, of course my mother commented something on facebook and mm. shared them a link to tell them and they were like what you have climbed everest Ranjana, you did not even know Ranjana. this sumri mein so, you entered the <laughs> info yeah and also i think i think i had also come to a point where i was like um I want I want to see what people think of me without my background and okay. without my title I get you like I want to see the real reaction of people do people tolerate me because I've climbed Everest or do people really like me mm. <laughs> you I know get, I get you uh all of that I think of course there are times when I enjoy Everest and you know I love mm, saying that I've done it and that I've climbed it but uh, it is it is very precious to me so i don't tell everyone about it i get you i get you uh also my take on this krishna is having um, been your friend for such a long time is that um, everest was a chapter uh, an important chapter uh, yeah. but it was your an relationship of that mountain now that's over but i think yeah. there's a part of you which is wants to reach out to more and more people and what the everest story does is it just makes it a little smaller compared to the vision that you want to do you know you want to like you're working in a cafe in srinagar you were working with the local local guys you i remember when the earthquake happened guys this is amazing when the earthquake happened in nepal everybody is running away from nepal krishna patel goes there and and stays there for how many months Six months. Six months working with alternative um, uh, uh, housing material, all that. She's crazy, and but that that is that that is her Everest. Each one of them to reach out to more and more and more and more people. Everest stories becomes very strong when you understand that philosophy of Krishna Patel, and I think that that is the most incredible part, Krishna. That's up to you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, before we uh, say goodbye, I think uh, it's very important to mention that. Um, this is where it started so anand had introduced me to you yes. and um uh, it sonan me um, our good friend uh, uh, vikram nilesh uh, we we actually have a group called the bavras and we did a concert where we decided kiya that ye itna pagal ladki hai isko paise kahan se milne wale hain and she was, <laughs> she was again climbing a mountain up as actually you don't get money for such stuff and i've seen how much she struggled but we did the concert we raised money it was a beautiful evening she went and climbed the point here is that just because i'm a musician does not mean i create music for musicians no i think i think i each of our um mingle if they can uh, just celebrate the spirit i think that becomes more important yeah can i can i say something so uh, i think our connection shantanu and my connection began from the 90s when abke savan came out uh the albums that we used to listen to on those trips to the himalayas were always these and till i met shantanu and that uh, evening where we sat and talked and he was like oh you know i i made this or i i don't know between that conversation it came out and i was like what you made <laughs> that song yeah. i used to listen to it in the mountains so- or like bavra man the song i'm sorry but i never knew that it was made by shantanu and swanand but when i was on elbrus i listened to it from the moment i caught the flight to russia which also i missed three times before i caught it hmm. and till i landed back in india i listened to only bavraman so i think that that connection was already there uh, you know uh, yeah 
most incredible more than that what was incredible is that i think the entire year of 2012 i have spent in the studio with uh, swanand and shantanu making music going for concerts yeah. i've seen yeah. swanand write uh, <laughs> lyrics at the end Like I, I, I still remember this one day when when Sanand was like, "मैं नहीं लिखूँगा आज कृष्णा कहानी बता यार एक कहानी बता." And um, by the by the end of that evening, he has written one of the most incredible songs. That's one of the last and minute. And thank you. I mean, it's magic having you guys uh, through this journey, part of this journey, helping me with, you know. just the crazies of my brain uh, and tolerating me <laughs> so it's it's been awesome to have you as a friend and may you climb many more uh, mountains physical and metaphysical uh, we'll end the <laughs> session by uh, today uh, krishna said an amazing thing about physicality ki yaar mai see you mai this is how a everest climber looks like you deal with it and i think if you have noticed krishna talking and you've seen her eyes are amazingly expressive they tell you stories so <laughs> This song is for uh, Krishna. Sikho na neno ki bhasha piya keh rahi tum se ye khamoshiya. Sikho na lab to na kholungi me samjho di ki boli. Sikho na. नैनो की भाषा पिया कह रही तुमसे ये खामोशिया सीखो ना पिया लब तो ना खोलूंगी मैं समझो दिल की बोली सीखो ना नैनो की भाषा पिया सुनना सीखो तुम भागो सन नन सन सन नन सन कहती है क्या है जैसा छेड़ो ना इसे हिल जाएंगी गहराइया कहने को अब बाकी है क्या ने सब कह तो दिया कहने को अब बाकी है क्या आटो ने सब कह तो दिया रे जाओ 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 पिया सीखो ना नैनो की भाषा पिया कह रही तुमसे ये खामोशिया सीखो ना लब तो ना खोलू कि मैं समझो दिल की बोली थैंक यू फॉर During this session, <laughs> this is incredible. This is the best song you could have sang. Thank you, Krishna Patel. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, audience. Sorry, this took two days, two parts, but I am, I am happy we did that because a lot of stories came. Uh, till another session. Keep on following Krishna Patel for her incredible deeds. Hasta la vista, babes. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.